morning to everyone. My name is Harshankar Patel. I am the Chief Financial Officer of Bank of Maharashtra. Good morning, students, and good morning, teachers. Uh, very good morning to everyone. My name is Harshankar Patel. As you got the introduction, I am the branch manager of Bank of Baroda Palghar branch. And today, I will be telling you the basic structure of banking system in India. But before I start that, I would like to share my personal journey with you. I have done my engineering from National Institute of Technology. After that, I did my MBA from ISBNM Pune. And from there, I was recruited directly into Bank of Baroda. I have been with this institution for the last 10 and a half years. And I have risen through the ranks gradually. I joined as an officer, then I became a manager, and then now I am a senior manager at present. So at this post, I am required to do a few functions, certain functions which are complex in nature. So as you can see uh, already on the screen, a bank is a financial institution which provides banking and other financial services to the common man. That is basically a bank lends money and borrows money. The bank also safeguards the money received from the customers. The banking system in India consists of all the banks which provides the customers of all the banking systems, you know, cash management services and to report their financial institutions. Okay, now we say that the bank is a financial institution and provides financial services. What exactly does it mean and why do we need the banks? We need the banks to safeguard the people's money. We need the banks. Yeah, got it. Uh, see, the people basically, they cannot keep all the money in their house because that is subject to looting or spending or getting spoiled. That is why the banks are, that is why the banks are required. And the banks are also needed to regulate the flow of money in the country. And the third thing is uniformity. See, before, before there were banks, there were uh, party dars, there were private lenders. There were people who used to keep money, but there was no uniformity in this. Some some people used to uh, you know keep money at a charge. Some used to do it for free. Some used to give it ten percent. Some used to give it fifteen percent. So in order to remove all that, the banks are required. Now I will tell you the basic structure of banks in India. But before that, see the governing body of banks in India is the Reserve Bank of India. It was formed by the government on first of April, nineteen thirty-five. All the banks in India are regulated by the RBI and it performs the functions of development and monitoring of banks. Now coming back to the structure of banks in India, RBI basically says there are two types of banks in India. One is the scheduled banks and one is the unscheduled banks. Just purely for the sake of definition, scheduled banks are those which are defined in the second section of the RBI Act 1934. Basically, these are the institutions which can uh, take customers money, give them interest and lend them money. Under the scheduled commercial ba scheduled banks, there are commercial banks. In commercial banks, there are four types of banks. One are the public sector banks, the private sector banks, the foreign sector banks and the regional rural banks. Now, what do, you, what do we mean by public sector banks? Public sector banks are those banks in which the stake of the government is more than 51%. These banks are formed by the government, the central government or the state government. Their main function is basically to lend money and keep uh, customers money and give them interest. Basically, these are profit making banks. The second banks, the private sector banks, the private sector banks are having a stake or equity by private lenders or private institutions. They are not owned by the bank. So I'll give you an example of private uh, public sector banks. Uh, bank of Baroda is a public sector bank, State Bank of India is a public sector bank, Union Bank of India is a public sector bank. And the examples of private sector banks are ICICI Bank, HDFC Bank, Axis Bank, Kotak Bank, etc. Now the foreign uh, sector banks are those banks whose registered offices are not in India, they are outside India. To give you an example, that would be City Bank, HSBC Bank. And the regional rural banks, these are the lesser known banks, but they have a very significant impact in India. Why? Because Indian banking sector is high, is only, let's say 10 to 15 percent organized. To reach all the rural places in India, to reach all the villages in India, 
the state governments and the uh, central government they sponsor some banks bank of baroda has also sponsored a few regional rural banks the the main function of these regional rural banks is to give agriculture credit to the rural customers which is not mainly given by the private sector banks and the public sector banks so this this is all for the scheduled banks and for the unscheduled banks there are cooperative banks in cooperative banks the uh, cooperative banks is basically made up of uh, stakes of private uh, private holders private individuals who may be may or may not be customers of the bank but they have a stake in the bank they are not institutional holders so this was, this is basically the structure of banks in india now if you take any bank we can classify the banks as i already told you uh, public sector banks are uh, the banks which are owned by the government private are the ones which are owned by the private entities this is basically all i have already told you see now we come to the main part the main what are the main functions of the bank see there are rbi defines two main functions of the bank one is the primary functions and one is the secondary function the primary function is basically accepting deposits and granting advances simply put how does the bank how does a bank make money let's say a bank will take 100 crores from the customers we will make an fd the fd for the fd the bank will have to give an interest of let's say 7% so on 100 crores a bank has to give 7 crores to its customers at the same time the bank will give out loans for rupees 100 crores and on that 100 crores the banks will get an interest of 9% so let's say they will get 9 crores in uh, interest on loans so the difference which you see we are giving 7 crores on deposit and we are getting 9 crores on loans the difference of 2 crores is the bank's profit this is how the banks work this is the main function of the bank but in recent past uh, due to the competition and the wide availability of internet and other services secondary, secondary functions have also been started and the main secondary function are the utility functions utility functions basically include giving of services like providing a locker to the customers the providing lockers has nothing to do with uh, accepting money or lending loans it is simply an ancillary service for which the bank charges a commission and it provides a safe keeping to the customers and we also in utility in uh, other utility functions see bank will also uh, issue demand drafts bank will also uh, you know maintain portfolio for the customers and apart from the utility services we have agency functions that is we do transfer of funds for you for the customers uh, these are mainly done by in the form of rtgs neft etc so the main function of the bank is to take money is to you know borrow money from the customers give interest on that and from that same money lend to the customers get interest and the difference is the profit earned by the banks Okay, so now I'll come to the different uh, types of deposits that the bank accepts. See, basically, basically there are four types of deposit the bank will accept. First is the savings account, which I think most of you might be having with us. The saving account for the children, I think it hardly has any minimum balance. And uh, you get some interest on that for whatever amount of money you put in the account. This is a basic savings bank account. Then there is a current account. Current account is for those people who are having a business. Let's say if you have a current account, there will be many transactions in that account. On one day, you might be uh, purchasing something from the from your sellers and then you might be selling to some people. So in order to keep a track of this, current accounts are open. Current account do not give out any interest to the customers. They are basically just for the keeping, for the sake of ledger keeping. Apart from this, the banks open term deposits and recurring deposits. The difference between recurring and term deposits is that the recurring deposit, you can deposit an amount, let's say in the multiples of thousands every month. 
and you earn some interest. This is basically a very good option for savings. It is a good option for saving for children, for people who are just started to earn their salary now. And term, de and term deposits are the FDs, which you po which we pro popularly call, the, call them as uh, term, uh, fixed deposits. Fixed deposits are put in lump sum for a period and you get some interest on that. Apart from this, there are four types of loans which the banks will give. One is the overdrafts, one is the term loans, one is uh, cash credits and one is bills. Discounting of bills and all is not done very heavily in the rural areas. The three types of loans are basically given uh, commonly by the banks. See, let's say you take a loan against uh, loan for your car or for your housing loan. That is a term loan. And let's say you take a loan for doing your business, day-to-day -day activities. That is called a cash credit. And if you are taking any loan against term deposit, that is called a overdraft account. Okay. So this was in brief what a bank does. But what actually happens in, when you go to a bank? How many of you have opened a savings bank account in any bank? Everyone has not opened an account? Okay, how many of you are having an individual account or with your parents? Everyone is having, right? Okay, so can anyone tell me how did you open the account? Anyone? Anyone, anyone, I mean, it is not a difficult question. How did you approach the bank? You went alone, you went with your parents. You went with your parents, right? Yes, you went with your parents to open the account. Why? Because now in the recent years, uh, children are allowed to open accounts above the age of 10. Earlier, this facility, 15 years ago when I was in school, this facility was not there. You had to open an account compulsorily with your parents, either with your mother or your father, your legal guardians. Now children above the age of 10 can open an account individually by themselves. There are certain limits and caps on that, but we will not uh, get much into that because at your age, you basically need to, need to only do the savings part. Uh, because that is what is most important right now, learning to save. See, for basically op opening a bank account, you need to approach the bank with your KYC. Uh, you might have heard KYC, KYC. Anyone knows the full form of KYC? Yes, tell me. Very good. That is a, this is a very good thing. See, what do the banks mean by know your customer? See, why this is important, knowing the customer? Because we need to know who is opening the account with us. There are officially, there are only four to six officially valid documents which our government considers for opening an account. Can you name, can you name one of them? The documents required for opening an account? Pan, see, PAN card is an important document but it is not officially, I tell you, see, officially valid documents are those documents which are designated by the RBI to open an account. PAN card is an important document but it is not an OVD. I will give you a hint. OVDs are those which have your photo identity proof as well as your address. Okay, one more. Come again. Can you speak up? Uh, light bill is not an OVD. It does not have your photo ID proof. It has the address but it is not an officially valid document. I will give you a hint. What do you require to fly abroad? Passport. Very good. So you have the Aadhaar card, you have the passport and in a few years many of you will be driving. So which document is that? Very good. And then at the age of 18 you will also do one more important thing required. What is that? Voter ID, very good. So these four, Aadhaar card, passport, voter ID and your driving license. These are the four officially valid documents which are required for opening accounts in India. As uh, someone correctly pointed out, know your customer. We need these documents because these documents have your photo ID proof as well as your address. So that there can be no cheating or fraud on part of the bank or the customer. So basically to open an account, you take one of these documents, you fill the form and then you open the account. What happens after you open the account? Anyone? 
After opening the account, what do you get? Passbook. Okay. See, passbook is basically a ledger of a ledger is simply put a ledger is a book. That book contains the records of your financial transaction. Let's say you put thousand rupees in that, it will show thousand rupees. If you remove five hundred rupees, there will be a record of all the things. Apart from the passbook, you also get the ATMs. Certain banks restrict the use of ATMs for children's account, and certain banks they give the use of ATMs for children's account. I am sure everyone knows the functions of ATM. What is the function of an ATM? Anyone? To withdraw money. And apart from that, please someone just can someone say the answer. Apart from withdrawing money, what does the ATM do? Okay, I'll tell you. Uh, right now, after the advent of digital banking, there are many things which can be done in an ATM. You can also withdraw money if you don't have an ATM card. You can use your account number and OTP and withdraw the money. From the ATMs, you can set reset your PIN. You can set reset your transaction limits. Let's say your card is having a limit of twenty thousand. You can set that to a minimum of let's say one thousand. Only one thousand will come out. And apart from ATMs, there are, there is a one there is one more machine which the banks have. That is a cash deposit machine. So you can deposit cash in that and withdraw as well. So this was basically the basic structure of banking in India and how you open an account with with us. So apart from this, uh, I will tell you. I will go into the digital transformation of the banking in India. See, earlier banking was done uh, where there were a few landlords who used to keep money for the customers. But the only problem was that this market was not regulated. They used to lend at exorbitant rates. Right now, you must have seen the holdings that someone is giving housing loan at 8.5 percent, 8.4 percent. At that, in the older ages, the people used to lend money at more than 5 percent per month. This was, this is like you must have heard about patpedis. Yes, so the patpedis used to do this. And what happened? How a bank is started? How the bank started functioning is that there were a few patpedis which outgrew themselves. They started from a small home to a small locality to a small city to a small town, and they went uh, statewide, and then they went nationwide. So, nationalization of the banks happened in 1968, when primarily 12 banks were nationalized. The first bank was SBI, and uh, Bank of Baroda was nationalized in 1968. So, why I am telling you all this is because financial literally literacy was not as it is. It was. It is not like this, which is right now. At 15 years before, 15 years before, you did not have your smartphones, you did not have your access to your account from the computers or the internet or the mobile phones. So now, in the advent of uh, the digital age, many new advances have come in banking industry. Right now, can you tell me how can you access your bank account apart from going to the bank? Net banking, very good. And then second, mobile banking, very good. Apart from this, those banks who are having internet kiosks at their branches, you can access your account from there as well. So what has happened is, is that the transaction of money, which earlier in the ancient ages there was a barter system, there was no money. You give wheat, you will get rice. You give something else, you will get something else. But now the money was earlier handled in physical form, and now slowly, slowly the money has come in the digital form. So I'll tell you a few forms of transfer for money. The first form of transfer is RTGS or NEFT. RTGS and NEFT was the first form of transfer across banks in India. And NEFT, what NEFT basically means is that you can transfer any amount up to two lakh rupees. Via NEFT. Now NEFT can be done by going through the branch from your mobile banking or your internet banking. RTGS. Do any of you know the full form of RTGS? NEFT. See, NEFT is basically net electronic fund transfer, and RTGS is net electronic fund transfer NEFT, and RTGS is real time gross settlement system. Gross RTGS is used for amounts about two two lakh rupees. And it is an instant transfer. Apart from RTGS and NEFT, 
you can also transfer money via IMPS immediate payment system but that has its limitations a few banks they keep the cap at 50,000 per transaction and 1 lakh per day from mobile banking and a few banks have the uh, limit at 10 lakh rupees so apart from RTGS, NEFT, IMPS, any other mode do any of you any other mode apart from these three no there are no other modes there are only three modes okay and let's say if a person wants to travel uh, wants to travel abroad and he wants to use the money abroad and get an, an amount in his account overseas so do any of you know how amount is transferred overseas have any of you done any yes tell me Yeah, very good. Uh, see, that is a different topic altogether. It is not wash through, it is not through account. So, uh, see, what basically you need to know for transferring money outside India is SWIFT. These are called SWIFT transaction. Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication. Just like RTGS and NEFT, if you want to transfer money across countries, SWIFT is used. Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication. Okay, and now since uh, you know, see, uh, do any of you know what is, uh, where is, uh, which bank is Paytm, which bank is PhonePay, do any of you know that? Where does Paytm have its bank or where does PhonePay have its bank? No. See, uh, in the recent years, RBI has introduced a system of account aggregators. I'm sorry, I don't have a slide for that. Account aggregators are basically your Paytms, your phone pays, your Google pays. They are not any banks. You will not find any physical banks of these three entities anywhere in India. They basically will take information from all the banks and provide it to the customers on their app. They are called account aggregators. They do not have banks anywhere in India. They will simply provide transfer, transfer of data. So this is the latest development which has happened in banking industry. I'm sure many of you might have uh, used this. And what is the mode of transfer for uh, Google Pay or Phone Pay or Paytm? Can anyone tell me? SBI. No, no, SBI is a bank. What is the mode of transfer? UPI. UPI I'm sorry. UPI. See, UPI is a, a mode of transaction which is used, which was introduced by RBI recently. And uh, apart from this, there are many digital products. ATM is one of them. Can you tell me the types of ATM anyone is having? What, who, which is a service provider on your ATM? Anyone? If you have an ATM, you can have a look. Which is the company which provides uh, ATMs to you? Very good. Apart from Rupay? Very good. Which is the third one? Very good. See, earlier there were only two service providers, Visa and Mastercard. But the problem was that because of the problem, RBI introduced Rupee cards. Rupee is introduced by NPCI. NPCI is a National Payments Corporation of India, which is a subsidiary of RBI. I will tell you a very important thing. See, if when we were giving Visa and Mastercard, the servers or the parent companies of Visa and Mastercard are located outside India. So whatever settlement had to be done was to be done in dollars. And because of this, the Indian government was losing foreign currency. So in order to counter this, Rupee card was introduced by the Indian government. That is why initially you might have seen that many people or many websites or many places were very reluctant to accept Rupee cards. But now there is a wide accept acceptability of rupee cards. So in the last decade there, are, there have been many 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 digital innovations and now the innovations are at such a level that if you are enough tech savvy you can go to any bank's uh, website and open an account by video KYC. This is the latest feature which has been introduced by RBI and they are actually pushing it. Why? Because in order to keep all the records in the banking system, there are many banks in India. 
there are 12 public sector more than 12 public sector banks more than 13 private banks in india and to keep the records physically is a waste of paper and to be doing that is a more waste as well so rbi is pushing to digitalize everything and the first step towards this is opening accounts via video kyc all your kyc all your records will be stored online okay and apart from this apart from the digital uh, boom the as i told you the main function of the bank is to lend money in the form and the most common form of lending money are housing loans vehicle loans and education loans all right even we'll these can be done online now we'll take sir we'll take questions now we'll take questions yeah. so this was basically the all regard this was a basic thing what the banks do and what the digital boom in india is doing right now get the if mic if you have any questions please ask me get the mic get the mic get the mic who is the anchor who is the anchor get the mic first any question will do it does not have to be okay sir can you explain about education loan yeah see education loan is basically a uh, loan which is given for any form of study in india we normally do not associate with education loan until we go for uh, undergraduate or post graduate courses but many banks they provide loans even for uh, studying up to 10th standard what what the government guidelines say is that for all the banks up to 4 lakhs there is no collateral or there is no guarantor required what i mean by collateral and guarantor is that there is no third party guarantee required or there is no security required in the form of either term deposit or property up to 4 lakhs 4 to 7 and a half lakhs two guarantors will be required but no security is required this is for everyone if you are plan if you are planning to uh, do any post graduate course you can keep this in mind up to between 4 4 lakhs and 7.5 lakhs there is no collateral required you do not have to give any security to the bank only two guarantors will be required above 7 and a half lakhs you will have to provide both guarantors as well as a collateral security so preferably in the form of a home or if you are having any term deposit see how any how education loan works is that we basically need a transcript of your uh, school records your 10th mark sheet 12th mark sheet all the mark sheets that you have along with the application form prescribed by the bank and your parents details so then depending on the how meritorious the student is the bank decides whether we should lend to this person or not in all probability the banks will give the loan if they do reject you will get it in writing this is a government guideline if any bank rejects to you ask them for a rejection letter in writing all right and education loan is basically there is, there are no many, there are not much formalities in that after you have given all the doc required documents the required documents are your mark sheet your pan card aadhar card your parents kyc and your parents income details it depends on the you give the fee structure let's say you require 3 lakhs of loan you will have to keep a certain margin of 5% the remaining you will get as loan 5% you will have to give all right ch 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 show me Uh, how much? How much is the interest? Keep it on only. Don't put off. How much is the interest on education loan? This is very important for all of you. Interest. Pay attention, all of you. Yeah. How much is the interest, and how we can repay that? How they can repay that? When they start job, or immediately they start paying, or uh, when they afterwards, when they uh, uh, for, uh, like for, uh, finish their studies, suppose that they finish, how they repay? Yeah. See the basic, the rate of interest right now across banks for education loan it starts from 8.5 and it goes up to 11 percent depending on what type of course you are selecting. Let's say you are doing a normal graduation course, it is a bachelor's or it is an engineering degree. The rate of interest is something in the range of nine and ten depending on what bank you are applying. If it is a premier institute, let's say IITs and IIMs, then even collateral is not required for loans about 7.5 lakhs and the rate of interest will be around 8.5 to 9 percent. how education loan works is that let's say you do a masters degree i'm sorry an undergraduate course in bachelor a bachelor's degree in science so whenever the college demands the fees the bank will pay from the loan see how see let's say the loan starts in 2023 right so the loan period includes your course period let's say your course period is 3 years so your the repayment of your loan will start either 6 months after getting a job or one year after completion of your course so if you are starting in 2023 and your course is for 3 years 
then your repayment will start after 2000 in 2026 after 6 months after you get a job or after one year of completion of course and during that time whatever amount has been paid by the bank for the payment of your fees there are two options you can either choose to pay that interest monthly or you can choose to incru, uh, you know accrue everything and pay totally at the when your course ends and you get a job and you start earning the most uh, common period is 74 uh, 7 years 84 months after you start a job okay. ask us a very important question can you tell us about the nostro account see the nostro accounts are uh, already there Th these are basically uh, the accounts which see nostro account is our account with you see there are three types of accounts these are mainly used in foreign transactions nostro vostro and loro see let's say if bank of baroda if my customer goes to the united states of america so bank of baroda might not have any uh, bank in the vicinity in which the customer is uh, staying so what what will what bank of baroda will do is that they will open an account with city bank in new york this account is called nostro account our account with you let's say if city bank opens an account in bank of baroda palgar branch because they don't have any account with us for that who cater their customers in the see one customer from united states come to palgar and they want to operate so city bank let's say suppose for the sake of argument uh, city bank does not have any bank uh, in palgar so what they will do is that they will open an account with bank of baroda it is basically your account with us Nostro account is our account with you, Vostro V, Vostro is your account with us and there is a third Loro account, L-O-R-O, -O. it is their account with them, it is basically let's say Bank of Baroda and City Bank, they both don't have an account anywhere, so they will open with a third entity just to cater to their customers, these are basically used in foreign transactions, alright? What is the that will be open at? See, uh, the rate of interest depends on uh, uh, the bank, the period. See, there, when you when you come to open an FD, there are there are three things which you have to keep in mind. What type of FD you are going to open? What is the period of the FD? And how you want the maturity? Let's say you want to open a fixed deposit, and you want to open it for a period of one year. So the rate of interest for Bank of Baroda for one year right now is seven point two five percent. And the maturity you can decide either you can uh, accumulate the interest which you see you might have heard of compound interest right. So there are two options either you can take the interest monthly or every three months or you can accrue the interest so that the maturity amount will be more and the compounding happens every three months. And the rate of interest which you are asking me uh, for Bank of Baroda the maximum rate of interest right now is 7.75% for a period of 399 days for senior citizens and for normal people it is 7.25. And these rates are also given by RBI. The banks cannot arbitrarily decide what rate of interest to give on FDs and what rate of interest to give on loans. RBI gives a blanket. Let's say the, they say that uh, our, uh, the rate of interest on uh, fixed deposit will be from 7.05 to 7.9. Some bank will choose 7.05, some banks will choose 7.9. That is why you might see on the holdings that we have now increased our rate of interest. But that is purely depend on how the bank wants to make a profit. I think what is important, sir, now, uh, these are 9th and 10th standard students. Okay. So, so what are the careers uh, in banking, in banking are uh, uh, available according to the advanced situation now? Uh, see, right now, uh, there are many opportunities. Earlier, there were, you might have, when I was studying, we hardly heard of four streams. One was arts, one was commerce, third was science, and the fourth was engineering. And those who were lucky enough, they went into medical. Right now, there are many niche fields which have come. See, you might have heard of uh, bachelors in uh, commerce, right? Now you will also hear, you might also be hearing bachelors in business management, bachelor in accounts and finance. So, what you can do after 10th standard is that if you are inclined towards the field of banking or finance, you can you can go for a commerce graduation or for a niche graduation. What will happen in this is that, see banks when they employ freshers, the first job that you will get is of marketing. What is the first job you will get? Marketing. Marketing is basically your ability 
to convince a customer to open your their account with us or buy whatever services you are providing so you can go for graduation in commerce in any of the accounting fields and then you can either go directly to the banks or you can do an mba if you want to further increase your prospects because see the richer your profile the richer your resume the more likely are your chances of getting a decent job see even if you don't get a job which you wanted you can always start in any of the banks gain experience and move on because see whatever you are learning now is important because that the base has to be important if the base is not good enough the building is not going to stand but if the base is good enough you can do anything thereafter so if you want to see right now in banking if you want to go in government banks government banks exam is con conducted by ibps institute of banking personnel selection there are two options one is clerical and one is officer i gave the same exam for officer in 2011 and i came in the bank there are only two options but this is purely dependent on the government if the government banks they put a vacancy you will get uh, you will have to appear for this exam and if you are lucky enough you will get the job and other other than this you can go for private banks in private banks also as you grow and you learn more about financial industry see apart from banking also there are many things which you can do you can go into investment banking investment banking is basically your share market and mutual funds if you are interested in in that you can go for that also right center center go to center okay ask ask okay. come friend come friend come friend come friend come friend come friend here come friend fast range would not Yeah. See, it depends on the size of the bank. Uh, in Mumbai, if it is a branch, see, it depends on the scale of the branch. My branch here is around 220 crores. In Mumbai, an average size of the bank is, let's say, 300 to 500 crores. So it depends on the scale. I am a senior manager, so the average salary per month is around 1 lakh rupees for a government employee. This is the gross before cutting everything. and the, the slabs are decided by the government these are not decided by the banks it is a uniform slab for the government i am a scale 3 if i was a manager let's say i was a manager in kelwa my, my salary would, be, would have been something around 80 to 85000 if i am a chief manager it will increase to let's say 1.25 to 1.3 lakhs it depends on the scale very good very good good yeah good questions you are asking okay excited like to copy the bank see as i already told you private bank see to to call any bank a private bank or a government bank there is a stake if the stake is more than 51% of any one we call, we call them the owner of that bank in bank of baroda the stake of the government is 68% it is a government bank in a private bank the equity is held by private investors or private holders right so let's say uh, tata will have uh, see, more than 50% in some bank since it is not a recognized by the government we call it a private bank and a cooperative banks are those banks whose share holding of 50% is not owned by any institute or any body it is owned by an individual let's say if i am an axis bank let's say we are a group we are we three are a group we are abc group we are having more than 51% so they will call it okay this is a private bank why because we are an entity but if a person holds more than 50% in a in a bank then we call them a cooperative bank there might not be one person there might be many 10 to 15 people who put in some money and their stake in the bank is more than 50% then it is a cooperative bank and the scale of the banks is less in mean, the cooperative bank will not be more than 50 cr or 20 cr so uh, can you come again please So, what, what qualities are there? Very. Uh, see, the most important quality of being a good manager is modesty. I may have all the knowledge in the world. I may have, you know, all the techniques, all the skills. But if I cannot provide service modestly to the customers, it is of no use. Because right now, uh, banking is a service industry. If I am going to provide service to the customers, then only they will come to me.
सी वॉट हैपन्स इज दैट वैल्युएशन ऑफ अ कंपनी दिस इज अ वेरी डीप यू विल हैव टू आई एक्सप्लेन टू यू इन ब्रीफ सो वॉट हैपन्स इज दैट देर इज अ थिंग कॉल्ड बैलेंस शीट इफ यू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू आर अवेयर ऑफ अ बैलेंस शीट I'll basically tell you there are two sides in a balance sheet. One is assets and one is liabilities. Who runs to? How do you decide my value? Questions. Very good. Yeah. See, a bank's value is decided by the assets it owns. The assets owned by the banks decided the value. So you, let's say we say you might have heard that you know Adani is having a net worth of let's say uh, 150 billion, which reduced to 75 billion. So that is basically the sum of the assets held by it. By what comes in assets is their capital and their reserves and surplus. I mean, it is a very deep concept. Basically, value is a monetary thing. See, value of a company might not decide how good a company is. Let's say if a company is growing now, the value might not be more, but let's say in the future its value will increase. That that is the difference. So, why are three banks so special? Uh, can you come again, please? Why are three banks so special? Because they businessmen, they are all three banks. See, uh, this is a very good question because you might have heard about black money and all that uh, in the recent past. See, basically, Swiss banks are the banks in the country of Switzerland, and their laws are very strict. They do not, they do not share information with any other banks or let's say Interpol or any other government agency. Why prefer go to see people who are doing illicit activity, or they want to hide their wealth, or you know their wealth is too much. Let's say if someone keeps an amount of 500 billion in a bank in India, you will uh, hear their name every day in the newspaper. So to avoid this scrutiny, people uh, Swiss banks because the country of Switzerland has not made any treaty with any country or any organization, be it Interpol, be it United Nations. What is the importance of financial literacy among students? Financial literacy. See, uh, this is a very good question. See, financial literacy among students is very important because I myself, I first I come to the practical thing. I have my parents at home. They are not very tech savvy. You might have heard about the uh, frauds which are happening because of the you know scamster, the social engineering frauds. Why students should be educated? so that you know how a transaction takes place in a bank financial literacy is important at this age because see uh, humans are creature of habit you might be waking up every day at 6 o'clock in the morning coming to school at 7 o'clock why is this required this is required for discipline same way financial literacy at this age will inculcate a sense of saving in all the students see it is very easy to get money but you might be earning 1 lakh rupees per month but if you are not saving or you don't know how to utilize that or you don't know how to manage that then it becomes a difficulty even if you are earning 5 lakh rupees per month so to inculcate that in uh, students at the very young age will sow the roots for them to understand how to manage their money because later on in life when you go you might be earning 1 lakh rupees per month then at the end of the year at the end of the month you will realize you also have to pay an income tax of 30000 so to make you understand these things financial literacy is important in students and also so that they can educate their parents as well because let's say when i am old when my kids are your age there might be things or techniques which i might not be knowing and they may learn and they will teach me this is why financial literacy is important for students as you would have completed your study of engineering college that means you are an engineer So why are you doing this bank work? And mostly seventy-five percent of engineering college students are doing today another job. I mean, BSc, IBS, bank. Why is that so? See, I did my engineering in mechanical engineering, and uh, to be very honest, I got a job in LNT TCC, but which was which is in Kolkata. I was uh, placed. Uh, I I was selected in campus placement, but the problem was that I was not interested in that job. the job see uh, i was coming to that point before going i was going to tell you this see whatever you learn here it's going to build your base but when you go to the job they are not going to ask you what is uh, newton's first law of motion <laughs> they will basically see your ability to work they will basically see your ability to you know get work done i did my engineering 
and then after that i did my mba i did my mba in finance because i was inclined in that uh, field so after doing that i went for a job. i gave that exam as i told you igps and i got selected in bank Uh, see, I'll become very practical with you. There is no difference in government and private banks now. We are working almost like a private bank. Earlier, there was a misconception that you know, if you work in a government bank, you simply have to sit behind and you know, you don't have to do anything. Those days are gone. Now, it purely depends on what your inclination is. See, private banks and uh, the government banks, the policies differ. There is only a subtle difference in policy. The working of the private banks and the uh, government banks are the same. Maybe the resource which you have in, at government banks might be less than those of the private banks. But the output which is required in private banks will be more than the government banks. So, if you are inclined to work in a particular area, let's say you want to work in for Forex. So, it doesn't matter if you are in any government bank or any private bank. The job will be the same. Job profile is same throughout. It is just that, you know, we make labels and titles. People say that private banks pay more. It is not like that. The pay doesn't matter. It is your inclination. Let's say you join a bank. You work there for one year. You take some experience and then you decide, no, this field is, this thing is not for me. I want to work in treasury or I want to work in cash or I want to work in uh, policy. You can decide that after going because the guidelines laid by RBI are the same for both the government as well as the private banks. Don't be shy, you can ask any question even if it is not related to the topic. Okay. How does the process to get a job in the international bank? See, if you want to work in an international bank, just like any bank job in India, you have to complete. See, for getting a job in India, you have to complete your tenth, your twelfth standard, your graduation, whatever post graduation you decide. Let's say MBA or MCom, whatever it is. Like that, there are other qualifications for working. The, 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 if you want to go in the foreign banks. There are two banks which are already present in India. One is JP Morgan Chase and one, one is Morgan Stanley. Apart from this also there are many uh, banks. They require a minimum working of five years in the service industry. Uh, that is you should be in uh, retail uh, outlets in contact with the customers. And apart from this, if you have done a course of CFA, Certified Financial Accountant, most of the banks ask for this. CFA is just like doing CA. See, there are there is the, there is one called company secretary. There is one course called uh, chartered accountant. There is one course called CFA. CFA is of two types. One is Indian CFA and one is international. So you'll have to clear at least the second level of international CFA for getting a job in any foreign bank. And if you do this, and if you have enough experience, you can even uh, work in IMF, International Monetary Fund. But for that prior experience of at least 5 to 7 years in Indian banks is required. Okay, last, last question we take. In? Uh, this is what I was uh, telling you. Uh, we had seen the. See, see, RBI, we defined the banks, right? So, the commercial banks are divided into public sector, private sector, foreign sector, and regional rural banks. See, the private banks and uh, RBI provides targets to all the banks. So, there are certain targets which are related to rural areas as well. For example, giving loan to self-help groups, giving loan for farming of crops, 
giving loan for rearing of cattle, animal husbandry, for fisheries. So, if you might have heard of the Jan Dhan movement. The Jan Dhan movement was basically started to open the accounts of all the people residing in India. Because if you might have heard before 2015, uh, the banks were mainly located in the cities and in the towns. But now you will find a bank in all the rural areas. And at least the government banks are interested or are they are asked by the government to open the accounts of all the customers, even if they are illiterate. Why? Because you need financial literacy. Because what happens is that, see, there is no safekeeping of money in the house. You don't have a record and you can spend it any way you want without any format. So to avoid that, the function of the banks is to first open a bank account, give them basic banking services and then give them loans for the purpose of crops. Right? Yeah. See, uh, international banks, uh, what happens is that, as your, colleague, your friend already pointed out, what is the role of banks in rural areas? See, the quantum of loans or the size of loans which are given by the government, government banks or the rural banks are very less. If you go to any private bank, you are, you they will ask you to open an account with a minimum of 10,000 rupees. From, uh, now there are many people in Palgar who might not be earning 10,000 rupees per month. So the criteria for getting a loan from private bank is not that much. But they are not inclined to give loans to those people who are not having a very good financial background. Whereas for government banks, we have policies in place to give loans to anyone, even if they do not have sufficient collateral security. Sir, sir, All right. sir. All right, thank you everyone.